So let's start with the analysis. We will um, tell you what, after the discussions of the bill, what, the, uh, what those who want the bill are saying and what those who don't want the bill are saying. It appears that the two parties have now converged about something that is not uh, directly, something that is directly related to the act of homosexuality, but it's about, also of a different kind. So I'll tell you what it is. Now, the, uh, the Akuto and Pau group have two difficulties. First of all, they feel that the bill is um, um, adversely going to affect the human rights of people in Ghana, particularly the right to speak, the, the freedom of expression. That's a guaranteed right under the Constitution. And Kukua a Japan is in the studio. He'll be giving us a legal background of all of these. Where, where, where is it? Why do we say that it's a fundamental human right, the right to free speech? Now, Akutompa and others are saying that in, in presenting this bill to Parliament, you, one will be criminalizing free speech. And they say that this is the work that had been done by all the people, human rights actors who were fighting Rawlings and all of that. They wanted to instill in Ghana's constitutional lifestyle a, a certain uh, power and authority and freedom, limitless freedom of free speech. They wanted free speech to be a beacon and a, a pivot around which our freedoms revolve. They argue that this bill is going to stop free speech. But why? Why are they arguing that this bill is going to stop free speech? That's the critical part. That is actually animating all the international observers who are looking at this. The bill is saying that one cannot advocate for gay, lesbian, homosexuality. You cannot advocate for it in Ghana if the bill is passed. The reason why they say that is that the bill is criminalizing or adding to the criminalization of sodomy, which is already uh, found in the Criminal Offenses Act. The bill is adding to that. The bill is criminalizing sodomy. If the bill is cr criminalizing sodomy, how then do you hold a meeting, write an article, speak on television, write a tweet about it within the context of Ghanaian jurisdiction? The, the uh, 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 Pentecost people and, and the Sam George, the sponsors of the bill, are saying that you should not be allowed to do that. If the act is a crime, you cannot advocate upon it. Now, that's where Akoto and Co are rising up. And they say that, well, you can have the act as a crime. It's already a crime in the uh, Criminal Offenses Act. Why are you preventing people from talking about it? And then Sam George says that, but if it is a crime, how can you talk about it? Can you talk about armed robbery? Can people gather in a room and say that we are armed robbers, we are going to have an armed robbery meeting, we are going to discuss armed robbery? Armed robbery is an offense, a criminal offense. You cannot gather to talk about it. That's where Akutampa, that's their first level of disagreement, and that's where this is becoming a very feisty battle. So they are saying that this bill, the Akutampa people are saying that this bill cannot be passed with that clause in there where people cannot discuss LGBT rights, and, and it's, it's modernization, that's what they say. I mean, many, many years ago, some of the things that are accepted today were not, were not accepted. Uh, Trocosi was accepted, we cancelled it as a result of advocacy, and Trocosi was steeped in cultural and religious practices. That, that's, that's the point, cultural and religious practice. That's where Trocosi was, you know, that's, that's where Trocosi is embedded. And then we, we began advocacy, and then we're able to, uh, as they say, break the shackles of the Trocosi philosophy. And then eventually we now have, um, we now have uh, uh, Trocosi gone. And, and we have advocated for things that have happened over the years. The, the black emancipation movement, for instance, women cannot vote, for instance. All of those things has changed or have changed because of advocacy. Akutan Pao, to the right-hand side of your screen, and his people are saying to Eric Namiche, who is on the left-hand side of your screen, and Sam George, that, look, allow us to advocate. You can keep it as a crime, but let people advocate. That's, that's the history of societies. Tonight, I'll take you to the touch screen. I'll show you the 18 members of Akuto's group. I'll give you their background so that you can understand where they are coming from. Now, Eric Nyamiche has today thrown in something. Yesterday, he did actually thrown in something uh, quite spectacular. Now, he's saying that, any political party, because this is now becoming a party thing, we know that both NDC and MPP persons are in parliament supporting the bill, but this is becoming a highly political matter. This is one of the most anticipated debates in the history of the Fourth Republic. Now I've covered parliament. I've covered parliament for most of the Fourth Republic. I have not seen any debate that is so highly anticipated with global, international significance as the debate that we're about to see sometime in November. It's going to, second reading is going to occur, and the debate is going to come on full force in the parliament. Many people 
people are bringing many suggestions, and tonight we'll add our voice to one of the suggestions. First of all, that this debate needs to be covered live on television, even if they don't do our Facebook page, will cover it live. You can be assured of that. It will be all over. Everybody will, I'm sure people will cover it live. We will cover it live. We will, we will build up to the event. We'll be in Parliament. You know how we do it. So, so leave that to us. Leave that to us. Just wait, get the date. Come on, good evening, Ghana official. We're going to blast it. Okay, yeah. Uh, that's one debate that we add our voice. It should, be, it should be allowed to be live on television. Now, the next thing is that when the voting is called, members of parliament must vote by announcing their decision. That's one of the procedures of, of parliamentary voting process. Anyway, I'm sure that parliament can look at it. So you, 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 you stand up and you say, I'm Paul Adumachi, member of parliament for Quabri uh, uh, East. I vote for the bill. Then you sit down. Then you stand up and you say, I'm Sam George, member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram. I vote against the bill. Then you sit down. And you stand up and say, I am so so and so, I vote for the bill. 275 members are going to cast their vote aloud. They should. They should give the Ghanaian people that opportunity. Cast your vote aloud. Let us know where you stand on this matter. It's a matter of principle. It's a matter of the future of our country. It's a matter of legislation. And I like that because it puts Ghana on the map. These things happen in Europe and America. They don't happen in African countries where 18 people or 17 with Akutompa begins advocacy for a bill that is in parliament and other people can talk. Everybody can express their opinion. That is democracy maturing. So I like that. This putting gun on the map. Let's just put the icing on the cake that on the day of voting, members of parliament should be able to proclaim loud and clear to the cameras and to the whole house where they, are, where they stand on this voting matter. Tonight we're going to explore all of these things. There's a second level of difficulty that Akutampa and his people have with the bill. So it's a private member's bill that's gone before parliament. It's a private member's bill. That means it is not initiated by the executive. Most of the bills in parliament are initiated by the executive. And uh, sometimes the difficulty that people have uh, is that this is listed as one of the demerits of party politics because bills must always be initiated by the executive and, um, and, and therefore bills of public interest that the executive does not consider politically useful does not get uh, uh, listed. So Professor Michael Kuh, when he became speaker, determined that he was going to allow the parliament in Ghana to pass bills, a private member's bill. Private member's bill can come from anyone, can come from the opposition, can come from a government person, but it just means that there's not a bill coming from the government the government of Nanado Danko Akufado. So this is a private member's bill. Private member's bill, however, has a limitation. What's the limitation? The limitation of the private member's bill is this. This is very clear. Let's hear this well. The private member's bill cannot, when it is passed, impose a tax on, on, the, on, on the Ghanaian pairs, if you like. I was going to say on the Ghanaian people, but there's a reason why I'm saying on the Ghanaian pairs. Later on, you understand me. So let me take that again. A private member's bill all over the world, and including Ghana, when it's passed, cannot, should not, be allowed to, in its implementation, in its expressions, it shouldn't be allowed to impose a, a tax on the Ghanaian pairs or the Ghanaian taxpayer. So private member's bill come in as a behavioral change kinds of bills, do this, don't do that, and advocacy bills, recognizing animal rights, all of those things come in as private member's bills. Now, those things come in um, as um, a bills that do not impose tax obligations, money obligations on the state. If a bill has to impose money obligations on the state, it has to be passed by the government. It cannot be a private member's bill. It has to be a government-sponsored bill. Okay. What are the intricacies in this bill that may occasion a, a, a charge on the Ghanaian exchequer? The bill says homosexuality is criminalized. The bill is of a regulatory nature. It's regulating something. Regulation means that there has to be an enforcement of that regulation. Enforcement means the police. To commit the police to, to enforce is taxpayers' money. Because if a policeman is, is told, as the bill allows, if I go and whisper to a policeman that you know, there's a certain Kofi Bedou and he's in a, a Laboni estate or he's in Northridge or he's in Nima, and I suspect that he's having a homosexual relation with uh, Alhaji Baba, you know, which is very unlikely, but yeah, you know, very unlikely, because I said Alhaji, very unlikely. So they go to the place, the police must go there. Now the police moving from Nima police station or Osu police station to attend to that uh, whistleblowing effort will occasion tax uh, a charge on the, on the public exchequer. It certainly it will. And uh, Kukwe Japan was drawing my attention to another aspect of the bill. There's another aspect of the bill that says that uh, the bill recognizes the homosexuality to be a psychological defect. 
So the bill says that if such defects are recognized, the Ghana Health Service is supposed to help that person to be corrected. That process will also location a charge on the uh, consolidated fund, if you like. So Akoto's technical argument, again, this one is part of his technical argument. I don't know whether he wants Parliament to resolve that or he's alerting Parliament that he may be seeking for a declaration in the Supreme Court for the Supreme Court to declare that the bill that is currently before Parliament, if it is passed, will be illegal because it will occasion um, uh, a charge on the consolidated fund. Yes, so that's the second leg of Akoto and the 18's argument. Now, Eric Namich's argument is that this is about the future of the country. So that's the second one, the legal one, the charge on the consolidated fund. It's a legally technical one, and we're not sure uh, how it's going to be resolved. Uh, we know that the speaker is a lawyer, but the Supreme Court is always available. We just don't know what the course of action will be. The, the Akoto and Co. will be seeking a declaration that X, Y, Z. We are not sure the parties that they will be bringing to the action because the bill is a bill of parliament, so they may have to bring parliament into the action and eventually, also, of course, also bring it against the attorney general, uh, who, is, who is the government lawyer. And all action initiated against the government should be initiated against the attorney general. So these are the two legs of Akoto's uh, conversation. And the other one is the Eric Nyamiche one. Tonight, we're going to go into it in substantial detail. Good evening. Welcome to the show again.